What's up, everyone? Ben Razier for Stochastic. I am here to talk a little U.S. Open action. The PGA World takes center stage. We've got the third major of the year. We've got everything. We've got drama. We've got Pinehurst. We've got Wiregrass. We're going to talk about all of that and more. We're most importantly, we're going to break down the tools and try to make some money a lot up for grabs in the DFS world. I'm glad you're here. I'm excited. We have some cool stuff. I will get to it in the video. I want to welcome you in, though. If you haven't seen this channel before, all things DFS. From golf to NBA, MLB, obviously, when NFL and college football get here, place you want to be, take a look around. If you like what you see, subscribe to the channel. But let's dive right into it. We got a lot to get to. Again, it is the U.S. Open. We know what we're getting. We've got a strong field, a ridiculous course, and every opportunity to break it down. So where do we start? Let's start with the course. Pinehurst number two. Heard a lot about it. We've seen the, you could check off on your bingo card. We've seen the Twitter video now where the guy drops the ball and it rolls 500 yards off the green. And everyone says, this is ridiculous. A tale as old as time. I'm sure it is going to play very, very difficult. There's no doubt about that. What do we need to take away though, in terms of what we're going to see here? So step one, from what I've gathered, uh, driving is going to be very important. It seems like you can be very aggressive off the tee. It does. You don't have to be a bomber. But with these fairways, you know, if you have the ability to club down, I guess you could. And obviously you want to be in the fairway, but getting a short iron in your hand seems important. It's the age old. I would prefer my guy to be long and accurate off the tee. Not that simple. Total driving, though, not a bad stat to look to. Want to be precise with your irons. It's, a, it's an all around test. Uh, traditionally, and I'll be doing this again, it's. To me, impossible just to lean on Greg's greens and regulation. You need to be able to scramble around the green is going to be important because you're going to get into some uncomfortable lies. You're going to miss some of these greens and you can't just be making triples, making quads when that happens. So I will look for around the green and then you're talking about Bermuda greens uh, in terms of the putting. They're going to be very, very quick. All of that stuff. I don't think you need to be one type of player in terms of distance. It does allow some of these, you know, second shot type players, strategic thinkers in. For me, though, I'm going to look to the driver. Good, good short game would help, but really an all around battle. Uh, obviously, Bermuda splits would help. Not minding uh, a winner of, you know, five under something like that, I think could be very, very important. But I'm not going to change up a lot of what I'm doing. It looks like the course could be baked out. Uh could could help the the shorter hitters in terms of the runoff and things like that. But let's dive into the field. It's not about that. We can get a cursory look at the course. There's a ton of information out there on that. I don't think it's as important as what we're doing with the field. And it starts with the guy who won last week and the week before and the week before and just he wins every week. That'd be Scotty Scheffler. 13,000 almost feels like an an underprice. It's insane. Uh that's just the world we're living in right now. You know, we I'm taking this early on a Wednesday. These, these information can and will update, but I think we're in a pretty good spot here. He's going to be extremely popular. We know that. How popular, I think, is up for debate. Um, you know, 30, 40, 50 percent maybe in small fields, things like that. There is nothing to say about Scotty Scheffler except for game theory. You know, if you're saying I don't want to have a guy that popular in a high variance tournament. That's probably the only thing that I see that you could go to. His optimal percentage is gigantic. He's the best player in the world, and it's not even particularly close. He's automatic off the tee. He's automatic with the irons. His putter has been much better lately. He's gained strokes putting in six of seven. That's going to be a problem for the field. Scheffler makes for a great play. We all know this. You've got Rory. I don't think I think he'll be a little more popular than we have on the screen right now. Uh, you're saving $900. Rory hasn't been bad by any stretch, um, but it's not to that level. He won at Wells Fargo, 12th at the PGA, top five in Canada, and then he was 15th last week. He's been great with the short game. His irons and his off-the-tee game are strong. They've always been strong. They haven't been domination too often. They were at Wells Fargo, and we saw what happened. Uh, so, you know, your dealer's choice up top, you're going to get a discount to Rory in price and ownership. He's not playing as good as Scheffler, uh, and and we all know that. Now, let's sort. First of all, I have the – let me sort by salary here so we can do this in order. Okay, we've got Xander and Bryson, two other players, obviously, that can be your first guy in 
they're going to be a very aggressive second man in. How do I rate them, honestly? Not a strong take on either. I'll let the Sims and the tools do the work with those guys. I'm sure I'll get them in the pool because I would like to have various outs there. You're talking about a $1,500 difference between Scheffler and Xander. You're talking about a $2,900 difference between Scheffler and Bryson. Bryson is not in a, in a dead zone. It's just that Rom withdrew. So you do have a big bump down uh, between those guys. Xander's 11-5 and then Bryson's 10-1. So I want to talk more about Bryson than Xander. Xander is, he broke through. He's got a major. He's playing really consistent golf and he does a lot of what you want. He's reliable off the tee. He's got a well-rounded game, good putter. No, no issues with Xander. Not making any hot takes up here. I think Bryson is by far the most volatile. If you told me one of these four get cut. I would say it's Bryson uh, because he's just the way he plays. Very scientific. We know all that. He was awesome at the PGA. He was good at the Masters as well. He's got a U.S. Open. I'm sure he's going to have a plan of attack, and that's kind of what I'm getting to. If it works, he's going to be right there. If it doesn't, though, we've seen, you know, Bryson, if you look at his U.S. Open history, miscut 25th, 31st, 1st, 26th, 56th, 20th. It's like a big mixed bag and a lot of, you know, average at best finishes. Uh, and, of course, those are all random courses since this is a rotational. So for me, Bryson, ownership feels about right. I'm sure he will be in the pool. Makes for a more balanced guy uh, in terms of what we're doing. But I do think he's less likely uh, to really pan out than, than the big three that I'm calling him. Now, we, we one more in the 10K range is Brooks. For me, he's on the outside looking in. It's nothing that he's done wrong. I mean, he's been a major killer for many years, and U.S. Opens was a focal point of that. Just don't know where the game is at. We saw him at the PGA and, you know, he kind of blew up and melted a little bit. Came in 26th, made the cut at the Masters, but did nothing. Uh, you know, he won the PGA in, in 2023. And he's playing on live, as we know, just like Bryson. So with him, I'd say he'd be the lowest of the five we've talked about. But he also has the lowest optimal percentage. And I agree with that. He's going to get squeezed for me. Now, let's go to the balance builds or your second man in. You've got guys like Victor Holland, Ebert, Morikawa, uh, you know, Cantlay, who's playing terrible golf, Wyndham Clark. So let, let's start to break it down. We'll start with Hovland. Interesting because, one, he, he's looking like he's going to have some ownership behind him, and I get it. He, of everyone we've talked about and we're going to talk about in, in the short term, has a glaring weakness. Unlike most of these other guys, they're all very well-rounded. Victor Hovland is not a good around the green player. He's not even close to an elite around the green player. He's just straight bad. It's a struggle for him. It's a pain point for him. He has gained once around the green uh, in 2024. That's not going to get it done. It was at the PGA and he came in third. I worry about him on this type of layout. Certainly his ability to drive the ball and, and just, just overpower any course is electric. But man, it's a tough ask when you know that you're going to have some tight lies around these greens. He's going to have to really step up and improve if we want to see him compete for this type of price tag. A bear, this is what I'm talking about. I like him a lot this week. I think he's a really not dark horse winner. We know he can win. Uh, he's got no experience at any of these tracks, and it just doesn't seem to matter. He was second at the Masters. He was fifth last week at Memorial. The injury woes, I mean, I'm not a doctor. It seems like it's not that big of a deal right now, though. He played last week, and from everything I heard, no issues. He's 9,600, electric driver of the ball, a better around the green player than Hovland. We'll see. You know, these are these are conditions that he may not have faced many a times. You know, he's got no U.S. Open experience, but he's that good. Uh, I think you can start with him. I think he could be your second man in. Ownership's going to be reasonable on him. I don't expect it crazy because Morikawa's right below him. And Morikawa is a guy that a lot of people are going to look to. I, I expect him to be a pretty popular win pick. And I get it. Fourth at the PGA. Fourth at Charles Schwab. Second at the Memorial. He's burning the edges. And the reason that there's a lot of reasons why to like him, but one of them has to be that his irons are returning. He had lost significantly with the irons for quite a while uh he was negative in five of six then he gained over three at the pga over four at the charles schwab and he gained over five at the memorial on the approach that is colin morikawa at the height of his powers he's one of if not the best 
iron players in the world. When he does that, he's going to be tough to stop. So I get it at 94. You could definitely start with him and go very, very balanced. I'd say that's probably doubtful for me. We'll see when I run run the Sims uh, what the lineups look like. But for me, most likely Morikawa will just be a standard play. Second man in, pair him with one of the 10K options, or go a bear and Morikawa like that. Throwing out Cantlay, if he beats me, he beats me. Throwing out Clark, if he beats me, he beats me. It's not to say these guys aren't talented. They can't turn it on. But of the guys up top, their form is by far the weakest. You see it in the ownership. You're talking about potentially sub-5% guys. Crash into the 8K range here with JT, Cam Smith, Max Homa, Tommy Fleetwood. Uh, This is kind of, to me, the start of the mid-range. I will say, and I want to say right off the top, before we get into it, I've already alluded a couple times to what we're looking at in the data hub and the Sims. I'm sure you guys have heard about it. Obviously, we have these for every sport. These Sims are the real deal. You've seen the screenshots. You've seen the success. Running the simulations, the customizable ability, it is a game changer. I have integrated it into my process uh, as many other people have. It has not revamped my process. It's just been an enhancement. It is absolutely worth it. And to celebrate, of course, it's the US Open. We had to do something, and we did. We did something very cool. I'm going to bring it up on the screen right now. If you haven't used these Sims before, we're offering it for a week for the PGA, $14.95. That is a gigantic price break. The code is Pinehurst. It's only valid this week. So the link is below. When you get to that checkout, use that code Pinehurst. You can see all of this in action. That from the data hub, the post-contest sim to the pre-contest sim, all of it for $14.95. It is worth checking out and see if it makes a difference in your process. No better time to test it than a major. And again, it's all right up here. You see this stuff different sites, showdown, it's all there for you. And and truly, I can say it has helped me uh, be a better player. Doesn't mean you win every time. Of course, that would be nice. If we invent that tool, I'll let you know. Uh, But game-changing stuff, code Pinehurst. Justin Thomas, what to do, what to do. I can't get him right, I'll be honest. Uh, That's more on gut feel. Liked him a lot at the Memorial, and I got... What I wanted, he was electric with his irons and he could not buy one. He could not buy a putt. He lost another three and a half strokes putting. I do feel like the game is close. He's made four straight cuts. Uh, He top 10 to the PGA. He missed the cut at the Masters. Uh, So it's been a rocky season for him. Probably not up to JT standards. 8,900 reasonable ownership. I will be over on JT. Cam Smith. A lot of the the discussion is going to be this. Can you survive off the tee? Well, Cam Smith is the key player in all of like, I'm going to just leak strokes off the tee and still get it done. He did it at the players where he won going away despite losing a ton of strokes off the tee. He's done it numerous times in his career. One of the best, if not the best short game players in the world. He top 10 at the Masters. Uh, Of course, he won an Open a couple years ago. I'm okay with Cam Smith. Normally, that's a fade for me. Not a big Cam Smith guy. But when I look at the, the upper eights, I have JT ahead of him, but if I can allocate 10% of my portfolio to a guy like Cam Smith, we'll see where this ownership goes. I will gladly do that. Not much to say about Homa. Pretty indifferent. Fleetwood, he never wins, let's be honest. Uh, I would know because I bet him all the time on the outright market, but he's very reliable. He's playing good golf. There's no doubting it. In 8,500, he's going to be a popular play. He's probably cash viable. He really does seemingly make the cut every week. He's only missed one cut since March. 20th last week, 21st in Canada, 26th at the PGA, 13th at Wells Fargo. He's peppering that top 20 of the leaderboard, and you might sign for that in this scenario. Uh, him, Fitzy, Finau, Decky, Spieth, Hatton, Lowry, and Thigala. That's who's on the screen right now. I like this range a lot. I'm going to have lineups that that have like two or three of these guys. If I had to rank them, I'd go Fleetwood one, Finau two, Fitzy three, Decky four. Uh, If ownership was equal, Decky would be elevated a little bit, but he's going to be the most popular of the bunch. He really thrived in some difficult conditions at Muirfield Village last week, came in eighth at the Memorial. His short game is quietly really good. One of the best around the green players in the world. We know what he can do at hard courses. He thrives for that. It's not going to bother him. He's an objectively bad Bermuda putter at times. I do worry about that, but you could say the same 
about a couple of these guys, certainly including a guy like Tony Finau, who's another bad Bermuda putter, but he's playing good golf. And then Fitzy, who I thought really showed something last week. I like where he's at. He was fifth at Memorial. It was mostly with the short game, but he does that. Um, If he can just clean up the irons a little bit, Fitzpatrick is a great tournament play this week. I'm actually a little surprised to see his ownership that high. I'm hoping it comes down on the next run because to me, he's a positive leverage play that I want to get to. So you've got a good range here. I think skill set stacks start to come into play. You know, if you're going Cam Smith, someone like Jordan Spieth, you know, makes a lot more sense. Uh, If you're going really, really aggressive off the tee, you might look to to a Tony Fina or someone like that, the gala, uh, who can be very, very aggressive at times and, and a good score. You think it's like crazy conditions in the wind and stuff? Maybe a Shane Lowry factors in. Hatton's over on live, but he's been very consistent. I think he's a pretty standard play at 7,800. In the pool, not, a, not an aggressive take. And, and at the U.S. Open, I do think there's more of that. And I, I try not to do it on videos because when you get done and you're like, what did this guy just say? He just said he everyone is like pretty standard and he likes Fleetwood. Like, what is that? Um, but for the U.S. Open, there is an element of that. My, my player pool will be slightly bigger. I will have a more nuanced positions of guys like Hatton where I don't make a crazy stand. I might have 10%, 15%, and it's just a very small position. Uh, we'll see what the ownership runs look like. But for me, a lot of these guys in this mid-range deserve to be in the pool. But let's keep scrolling. Uh, obviously, it's going to start to thin out. This is a tournament-centric area from Cam Young to DJ. Jason Day, uh, I think he's pretty interesting at 5%. Min Woo, Tom Kim, Corey Connors. Sam Burns, Bobby Mack, and Sanjay. So I think that Corey Connors will probably be a guy a lot of people look to in small fields. He doesn't miss cuts. He gains strokes off the tee without being crazy long. Really good iron player. He fits a lot of what you want to do. He could get absolutely eaten alive around the green and off uh, with the putter. We've seen that at times with him. But he's getting, you know, certainly better in those areas. He's got plenty of major experience. Uh... He's been absolutely terrible at U.S. Opens. And that's probably the biggest knock on Corey Connors. He's had no success whatsoever, just a string of missed cuts. So you look at that, is there an inherent flaw in his game? Is it variance? Is it some bad luck? It's probably a little of both, to be honest. When you look at the rest of the range, there's not as much ownership to go around. Min Woo, Tom Kim, guys like that, I think their ownership's going to come down a little bit. I'll give a shout out to Jason Day. His irons have been weak, but he knows what he's doing with the short game. He's obviously played in a bajillion of these top five at Wells Fargo. Virtually automatic with the putter. And that's when he was at the height of his powers. He was a great putter. I think we're starting to see that more and more with him once again. But the last guy on my screen is the guy I want to talk about the most, Sun J.M. I really like the spot for him. I bet him at over 100 to 1. He's a good Bermuda player. He won at Honda, which is another Bermuda technical layout and a difficult one at that. He was ninth in Charles Schwab. He was eighth at the Memorial. He's gained off the tee in every event since March 3rd at the Classic. He's gained strokes putting in three of four. His irons are hit and miss, but he's not bleeding severely there. Well-rounded game, really good price at 7,100. Core play for me in Sun J.M. Benny An, right below him. Another South Korean, Justin Rose. Ricky, who shot 14 over last week. That was very bad. Henley, Noren, Scott, Harmon, Burmeester, Si Wu. Different types of players here. Uh, Benny on his off the tee game has really, really improved this year. He is getting it out there. So if you think driving distance and things like that matter, you can look to him. He's a better around the green player than you would think. His putting has improved. It's still a liability at times. Alex Noren, uh, you know, it seemed like he was building to that elusive win. And it certainly didn't get there uh, at Memorial. He he came in 22nd, but not much to say. He was good with the putter, bad with everything else. He had missed the cut in Canada, which was a little disappointing. He's got to find a way to get back to that ball striking. So if I'm in a jam and he pops up, I think that's fine. Certainly not looking to get to any of these guys in, in massive numbers. Similar to Jason Day, though, I'm going to give a shout out to Adam Scott. He grades out pretty well looking at these tools. Uh, We have him projected for 5% ownership right now. 
optimal percentage a little north of that top six percentage is solid again these are going to update but he's got you know a couple decades of experience at us opens he doesn't miss many cuts he's only missed one cut since the beginning of march and that was at the pga very reliable off the tee it's the putter he's lost in four or five with the putter everything else in his game looks solid he knows how to navigate these tests and i think that this type of challenge of what we could get we're posting you know one under we're posting even is a very very respectable score i think that helps scott he can lag putt knows what he's doing if he doesn't get destroyed by the greens he will make this cut and he will be a fine play at 6900 rest of this range you know siwoo he's another guy he makes more than his fair share of cuts as we scroll down keegan that's going to be an off the tee guy if you want to go there. Denny McCarthy, that's going to be a putting specialist if you want to go there. Man. Uh, thing I want to point out right now, look at these ownerships. Minimal, minimal, minimal. And you see, whoa, what is this? And that is Seb Straka. 6,500. Obviously, when pricing gets released for majors, it is done early because it's such a big week. They want to give people a chance. What it doesn't do, it doesn't bake in what we just saw. And Sepp Draka came in fifth at the Memorial. And so he obviously stands out as a really underpriced play because he's playing really good golf. He's got four top tens in his last five events. The miscut at the PGA is surrounded by a fifth, an eighth, a fifth, and a fifth. So he has just been dealing. His irons are great. His tee to green game is very solid. Another guy that around the green is probably the biggest liability. So if you think that doesn't matter, maybe, maybe you pair him with Hopland. Uh, you go like European flavor and, and non-scramblers. But Seb Straka is going to be the most popular play in this range. Certainly viable. If he is 18 to 20%, I will not be able to get leverage there. That is a lot for a $6,500 player. If he comes down a little bit, sure. Uh, let's see what we can get because the opportunity cost it's not great, but there's so many pivots potentially. Uh, you've got Batia, Fox, Kitayama, who was awful last week. Aaron Rye is here. Poston, Glover, Tiger. D don't play Tiger, please. EVR, Cam Davis. Those are pure scores. So when I get down here, I start labeling guys not for basically their salary or anything, but more skill set. Like, okay, these are my bomber options. These are my short game specialists because you're not going to find well-rounded players in the lower sixes. For me, I think Aaron Rye makes sense. I think Lucas Glover makes sense. Lucas Glover's got experience. His putter many times lets us down. That's everywhere, though. That's not going to be unique to Pinehurst. Missed the cut at the Memorial, lost four strokes putting. At Charles Schwab, he gained six strokes putting, and he came in 12th. He made the cut at the PGA. He made the cut at the Masters. He was 11th at Valspar, uh, a technical tight layout. Lucas Glover can make this cut. Not going to be popular whatsoever. Don't need to allocate a ton to play him. That's exactly the kind of play I want down here. Scrolling to the bottom of the sixes. Christian Bezidenhut, my other guilty pleasure. You've got a South African here who has a style that can really translate. What is it? World class around the green game and world-class putting fantastic specialist with the short game he has made every cut since where are we going end of february beginning of march he missed the cut at the classic and he missed the cut at the pga so he's missed one cut in like three months at the pga he was fourth at the memorial 17th at charles schwab he has gained strokes around the green in nine straight events that's just stupid now what's the problem well, when, you, when you're that good of a short game player, if you had a good driver, you would be Scotty Scheffler. Bez does not drive the ball well. Can he survive off the tee at this type of layout? It's a big challenge. At Wells Fargo, he was bad off the tee, and he survived Quail Hollow. He came in 16th. He survived at Valspar off the tee. He came in 9th. He survived off the tee at Sawgrass for the players. He came in 13th. He can do it. He just has to find a way to really be crisp. If we get a good iron performance, Bez is going to blow this price point out of the water. There's no doubt about it. He also looks like he's going to be the most popular in this range. Hadwin had a really good showing last week. Chris Kirk is down here. Mackenzie Hughes is another short game specialist. 
we start to fall off pretty quickly. Victor Perez and Pendrith uh, are names. Mark Hubbard is a, a cut maker, but there's a big step up, obviously. I'm not going to have much here. This is where you're really going to be drawing thin. You know that any allocation is going to give you leverage on the field. Last man in style. If I don't have to go into the fives, I won't. But if I do, what do we do? Okay, so a couple names to point out. David Puig, over on Live, talented player. He's a 22-year-old Spanish player. If you want to bet purely on talent, I think you can do that. Uh, we don't know a ton about him, or at least I don't, in the sense that he doesn't have a ton of experience. He's playing on Live. He was third at Live Houston. Um, he missed the cut at the PGA. Again, this is the type of stuff we're going to have to read between the lines. I don't think that that's the craziest play in the world, though, if you want to bet on the talent. Adam Svensson. Shank is also there, which is fine. But to me, Adam Svensson is the play in the upper fives. The guy makes cuts. Say what you want about his placement points. And they'll come if he can just tune up the putter a little bit. But he's working on made cut streaks. Uh, really, really been solid. He was made the cut at the PGA. Came in 43rd. He was 27th last week at the Memorial. He's gained off the tee in five straight. He has lost strokes putting in four of five. And that is the big problem. He doesn't really have a preferred surface. I don't see anything crazy with his Bermuda splits, and, and I think that's probably pretty noisy. But when you strike it this well, I think he can hang in here. I know it's a guy that it's been a pain point, but you're talking about a $5,900 player in a range that's really devoid of any stability whatsoever. There's no ownership associated with it. Uh, we'll see how he grades out. But to me, last man in, it would be Svensson over guys like Dunlap or Sig, Justin Lauer, Harry Higgs, Martin Keimer, the defending champ at Pinehurst, not going to be going there either. It's pretty bad in this range. Let's get to the last page here. And again, I do want to say, if you have any questions at all, at JazzRazDFS on Twitter, we're doing all sorts of things. Uh, you know, bets, DFS, whatever I can help with, happy to. And, and speaking of betting real quick, if you do like golf betting, head over to oddshopper.com. I've got all my content over there. I've got the tools, the picks, the Discord. It's all part of it. And if you're watching this video on Wednesday, which I assume you are, we are. if you go to oddshopper.com, there is a banner that says $1 flash sale because we're running a sale there. You can get a week of oddshopper for a single dollar because of a uh, little home run action we had last night. The code is Dinger. It's all in the info below, and it is over on oddshopper.com. So a lot of just fun things in the stochastic community right now. And we want to help. We want you guys as part of the team. Where do we go here? I, I honestly think the answer is don't. Don't go into these ranges. Uh, if you see someone and you've got a line on them and you say this is why they can make the cut, more power to you. I can guarantee you some of these guys are going to make the cut. But more of them are going to shoot 15 over and they're just not going to be pertinent. Uh, Mr. Pete Fish is down here. Okay. I do like to scroll the names just for my deranged self to see who these people are. Otto Black is here. John Chin, Colin Prater. Yeah, I'm I'm not going to be doing any of this. So my drop dead price is going to be in the upper fives. You know, I, I think I'm not going to be going below that Shank Svensson type ordeal. And for me, I actually want to stick in the sixes if I can. Uh, there's just so many, so many different ways to build here. And again, the tools will do the work for me. I'll smooth it out. I'll probably man manually boost uh, a couple guys for me. You know, the Sunjays, the Fitzies, Finau, Fleetwood. Certainly up top, it'll be a mixed match. A Bear, this guy I want a lot of. Svensson, Scott, you know, I rattled them off in the video, but those are just some of the plays that come to my mind. And I think I, I, what I really want to do, and you know, my final thoughts before I bounce out of here, A, appreciate everyone hanging out with for a half hour with me as I talk through this. Work backwards. That is the, always, to me, the key in majors. If you think the winning score is like over par, that should really change your player pool. If you think that this is overblown and the winning score is going to be like 15 under, that should change your player pool. That's a huge boost to greens and regulation, to iron players. I think it de-emphasizes scrambling. Uh, and things like that. It's really about how do you see the tournament playing, work back, find some leverage points, spin the wheel. Hopefully, 
hopefully get lucky at the right time. That's really what it's all about. But I cannot wait to see this course. I, I obviously I love the Masters. I've been really excited for Pinehurst, though. I think this is a great venue. It's going to produce a lot of drama. And I think it's going to be a very, very exploitable DFS week. I think there are some edges that we can get to. And I'm going to take my shot and see what we can get. We'll bounce on out of here, though. Again, appreciate everyone. Jazz Raz DFS. Shout out. And the final thing I do want to leave you with is this. The 1495 deal. Don't wait on it. It's there for this week. It is worth a try. And if you enjoy it, I hope you stick around. Make some money. And if you do, please tweet us. We want to celebrate that. I want to see those avatars at the top of the leaderboard, hopefully mine included. But for me, for Scheffler in the field, and for Pinehurst number two, US Open about to tee off. Good luck, everyone. Thanks for coming here at Stochastic. We'll talk to you soon.